AI and robots are going crazy. Honestly, I don't know if I like what's happening right now. Super excited for it, but I am shitting my pants. We're going to talk about robots today, obviously, right? We're also going to talk a little bit about near future and what robot you're going to have at home. Stick around because it's going to get really, really, really crazy. Okay, I've been talking about this since I think 2014, 15, somewhat in that area. I do remember that in 2015, I was reading an article by Tim Urban that I can absolutely recommend. I'll link it in the description here. It's titled The AI Revolution, The Road to Super Intelligence. Now for this, we have to understand three things. Number one is what is intelligence even? Number two is what is uh, human level intelligence or um, AGI, as you would call it, and what is superhuman intelligence. Let's get through this real quick. The first thing, intelligence is essentially the problem solving capability. The more calculation power you have, computing power, you would say, more intelligence you can technically create. A long time ago, for example, in the Second World War, the computing power was very limited compared to nowadays. However, there was already computing power. So you would have people create, for example, codes and others then decipher them. You would have situations where you would need a lot of thinking, obviously, to solve certain puzzles, essentially. And this became more and more automated to nowadays where we are right now, which is a time full of screens and um, phones and computers and everything, right? So everything is a computer nowadays. However, this is gonna get really crazy really fast because the invention of AI as is right now, as we know, ChatGPT and everything else, this is just the beginning. That's because ChatGPT right now is not as smart as a human being. It is smart. It's just not as smart as a human being yet. The next step will be for it to catch up to human beings and then surpassing human beings and at some point even becoming self-aware. This is pretty crazy. There are so many things to talk about in this context. So let's look at the rate of development. The pace of what's happening right now is going to get really quick, really fast. Look at this. Right now, we are here, right? What we see is essentially things have gotten um, a, bit, a lot better over time. And we're at a point in time where we think like, wow, the current stage of development is crazy. However, at some point in the near future, we will have the situation where the AI is able to help itself to get better, which already is kind of the case, but it's going to go really crazy. And then all of a sudden, it's going to look like this. What we see right now is here, the present day. We see that, oh yeah, it's fast. It's been fast in the last, whatever, 10 years. But what we don't see is how exponential growth is faster than we think. So theoretically, what we would think is that it's going to take another 10, 20, maybe 30 years before AI is able to take over. However, that would be linearly thinking. Right now we have Wang's law. It's the uh, CEO founder of NVIDIA who came up with a new law. The rate at which computer chips are getting better is exponential and the rate at which things get better gets faster. This is a lake that's exponentially filling. Now, nothing's happening, but all of a sudden whoop, it's filled. And this explains exponential growth. It takes forever to get started, but the last few steps are pretty much instantly. So what does this mean? What you think what's going to happen in the next 30 years is probably what's going to happen in the next three or maybe five years if it's for some reason slow. And here are a few things that are insanely scary about this. When you look at the list of humanoid robots right now, what you see is these don't even list the newest ones. These robots, they're old, at least like months, some even years, or even uh, Sophia is like a decade old, right? Right now is that every company essentially that's working with AI or something like AI is looking to build a robot because this is going to be the new iPhone. I know that this sounds weird, but you're going to have a robot at home that's walking and talking like a human being within the next few years. This means you will have a personal servant, someone who collects your mail, someone who feeds the dog, someone who carries your stuff up the stairs, a robot that's able to give you all the knowledge you need. And this is not in 20 years. This is in the next two or three years. And then maybe in five years or so, it will be so advanced, you'll literally have the feeling to be talking to another human being. That's absolute insanity. Let's look at current developments just of this month, why it's certain that it's going to happen like this. NVIDIA has just created a humanoid robot. Let me show you a few clips from this presentation that NVIDIA just did. This is NVIDIA Project Grid. To learn from a handful of human demonstrations. Come on, you guys, let's wrap up. Let's go. Also, everybody knows Optimus, the Tesla robot.
And finally, probably even most shocking, the current development of OpenAI, the makers of ChatGPT, together with Figure One, so the robot that they're working with. It is absolutely insane. Watch this video. Great. Can I have something to eat? Sure thing. Great. Can you explain why you did what you just did while you pick up this trash? On it. So I gave you the apple because it's the only uh, edible item I could provide you with from the table. All of this has happened within the last few weeks. Look at the way that figure one is moving the box where it puts the trash in. Look at the guy saying he wants something to eat and the robot makes the conclusion, oh, he wants something to eat, so he wants me to give him something to eat. Where can I find something? Oh, there's an apple. Apples are edible. Let me offer it to him. There are so many assumptions in there. You need to be somewhat smart to make them. Because if you tell your dog, your dog is literally not going to hand you the apple. What does that mean for us? I think there's specifically one thing that we need to keep in mind when talking about this. It is unstoppable. As soon as these things become their own entity, we won't be able to do anything about it. This is a kind of matrix thing. Elon Musk explains it very well. How can we avoid to be consumed by AI, essentially? Killed by AI, even? The answer is we melt and become one with it. That's what Neuralink is about. Neuralink also making huge progress right now at their first implants. Now, if you're not sure what Neuralink is, Neuralink essentially is Elon Musk's company that creates a brain computer interface. So a thing, essentially, that they put in your brain so you can steer a computer with your thoughts, ultimately leading to not needing to type on the phone. If we type on the phone, even if we type on a keyboard, this is so much slower than just telling someone something or telling someone is still slower than thinking it. In the next few years, we will have robots that are omni-capable. They can do everything. They can think, they can carry, they can protect you, they can do everything. And we're able to steer them with our thoughts. We have both technologies already here with us. Isn't this crazy? I just can't fucking believe how fast things are happening right now. I know a few years ago, when Ziri came out, everybody was like, oh, do I need an umbrella? And every and then it said, it's not gonna rain. And you're like, ha ha, you got it. No, it was stupid as shit. And now we have these robots and they actually understand it. We have this AI, it actually understands it. And it's still just the beginning. The development from Ziri to now, it's more than 10 years. And capabilities of ChatGPT compared to Ziri are day and night. This day and night development is gonna be the same, but it's not gonna take another 10 years. It's gonna take another two years or three years because of exponential growth. So what we will see within just a few years is melting and becoming one with these robots. In the end, if you use your phone, it's the same as having the chip in your brain. It's just in your hand instead of your brain. Sending messages to the void, essentially, and it appears on somebody else's phone. It's the same thing as sending a thought and it appears in somebody's brain. When you Google something right now, you'll be able to Google it with your thoughts. When you want to have navigation to some place, you're going to be able to have navigation through your thoughts. This is obviously the only way, because if we are a separate entity, it's going to be the same thing that we, as a separate entity, are doing with other separate entities right now. Animals, plants, earth. We are inherently so superior to everything else that we know that we enslave everything, use everything, and we don't really give a shit about it. So what then happens if we create something that's smarter and stronger and faster than us? Either we're really lucky and it's inherently benevolent or we're pretty much effed. That is the problem. And that's why it's so important we mail together with it and we become one with the AI. That means that we need to have it in our brain and our brain to be online in a way where we can really become the machine. Now, this is some crazy shit, I know. And there are so many interesting things out there you could watch or listen. But there's one thing specifically that I think is very explanatory of the current situation we're in. Sam Altman's interview that he's given Lex Friedman recently. Because this interview essentially is where he talks about the current state of ChatGPT and OpenAI in general. And what he thinks where it's going to be with AGI. Now, remember when we said we had to define intelligence, then human intelligence, AGI, and super intelligence. So far, we have talked about AGI, human level intelligence of beings out there. What this will lead to is that we have these machines that accompany us every day. But super intelligence is a whole nother thing. 
The reason being that we don't know what it is, how it works and what it will do. You cannot grasp how insanely different it is from everything we know. Let's look at ants. If you explain to them what a house is that we built next to their hill, where if you sit there and you do your best, whatever way you can use to communicate with ants as good as possible, you will never be able to explain to an ant what the universe is. Because the complexity, the intensity, the, the necessary skill set to really understand what that is, you don't have it and you won't be able to get it from an end because an end is inherently biologically limited to what it is and that's humans compared to super intelligence we are super intelligent compared to an end the ai the robots everything is going to be so intelligent we are going to be the end we're going to be the stupid little thing that has biological limits that it cannot surpass no matter what and the other thing we created going to be so much more intelligent it'll just be the god of the universe the master of everything if we do not melt together with it and there's no stopping it so that's literally the only chance we have there are speculations already OpenAI has a form of of general artificial intelligence. Sam Altman himself denies that. He says nobody has seen anything like artificial general intelligence in the world. It does not yet exist. Others say there are different levels to it. Let's look at the levels of AGI. There is narrow and general intelligence. Narrow intelligence is a thing that can do one thing really well. So a calculator, a chess artificial intelligence, a tool that is developed to do one thing better than anybody or anything else. These levels that you see here, they are level zero, to level five. With general intelligence, you have a tool that is able to use the solutions it has for one thing and apply it and adapt it to another thing. It's not only good at chess, it can use what it learned from chess and apply it to whatever, for example, strategy it has talking to a human being and influencing that person, right? The way you can do this also. Sam Altman says is that we did not achieve level two of general intelligence. Now, emerging AI, something that already feels like it, but but obviously is limited is ChatGPT. We also have Bart and Llama too. What Altman says is there's nothing that's a competent AGI, not even internally yet. But I'm not sure about this actually. Who determines what it is in the end? It's really, it's, it's a bit tough. What is this specific level you need to be able to achieve as an artificial intelligence to be categorized as one or the other? I do think in the end that we'll see something like a competent AGI, so level two, within the next 12 months, a level three expert within the 12 months after that. And then probably we're already getting into super intelligence areas. So virtuoso AGI, as they call it here, is smarter and more capable and more skilled than 99% of human beings. And that is when we'll see in four, five, six years, super intelligence, if not faster, probably already in four years. It's a crazy time we are living in. If you want to know more about this, watch the interview of Sam Altman. I put the link in the description. And now I wonder, what do you you think about artificial intelligence and robots? Do you think you're going to have a robot at home in the near future? Do you think you're going to have an AI assistant? What do you think it's going to cost? I reckon it's going to be something like 10k or maybe 20k for the first robots and then it's going to get cheaper real quick and just in a few years we'll have robots for a thousand bucks. People are already paying for an iPhone right now anyways. So it's going to get real, 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 real funky real fast. See you in the next one.